<laughs> All right, well, we are back and joined by Congressman Tony Gonzalez, who just finished meeting with officials at Fort Bliss. And Congressman Fort Bliss is such a big part of your district and lots of stuff happening in your district. If you want to tell us a little bit about your visit at Fort Bliss. Yeah, it's, it's been a great day in El Paso. And I spent 20 years in the military. I retired a Navy Master Chief and today kicked off having breakfast with the Sergeant Major of the Army. And this, you know, this guy's in charge of He's a, he's a senior enlisted person in the entire army. Over a million people report to him. Mm -hmm. And part of it was to talk about the importance Fort Bliss plays in the community, the infrastructure that's so, so importantly needed. Uh, we also got money for a family separation allowance. Right now, if a, a soldier is deployed, soldier, sailor, airman, or, or marine is deployed, they get $250 for family separation allowance. We just passed the NDAA that increases that to $400 we're pushing that to make that a reality. Well, so, you know, like I mentioned, Fort Bliss is such a big part of your district and very important to come and see how the operations are there for sure. You know, and, and sadly, there was, there was, someone took their own life at Fort Bliss a few days ago. And so we also talked about suicide prevention. And uh, I, sit on the, I sit on the bipartisan for country caucus. This is a caucus made up of Republicans and Democrats that have served in the military. And one of our priorities is to prevent suicides. And so uh, I've helped author the uh, VA Zero Suicide Act. Uh, and I think that's important. We had that discussion. We also here in El Paso have pushed very hard for a new hospital, a mm -hmm. $700 million hospital that's on the rise. That will increase the number of beds. You know, mental health is so important in many ways for our yes, community. Of course. And s since you're here in El Paso and you're, you know, have a really busy day, you have a lot going on today. Your next stop is over in Socorro for the wastewater project ribbon cutting. Yes, so while we were on Fort Bliss, we also visited with the uh, BORTAC, the Border Patrol. They're the special operations group that oftentimes you'll see them saving migrants mm -hmm. that, are, that are in a desperate situation. And then we will go to Socorro and uh, the, the Lower Valley in many ways, infrastructure is so very important. So uh, we've worked real closely with Nat Bank and uh, building some water infrastructure there. I'll also meet, while I'm, while I'm in town, I'll meet with the uh, San Elizario Police Department uh, and, and have a discussion on local law enforcement. You know this, El Paso is a very diverse community, yes. so many things to talk about, and oftentimes we get stuck talking about X, Y, or Z. There's so much more to the community to it, so it's important for us to have a full day, kind of business community, base, uh, local first responders, and uh, just the whole, the whole gamut. And it's also very important to, you know, visit these communities and see what they need. I know you help secure funding for those projects, uh, the wastewater project as well. So. Yeah, this is a big part of Congress. I mean, you see it up in Washington. Everyone's fighting each other, and, and that's all fun, and, you know, that's all the politics in it. But our job is to come back and deliver for the community real tangible things, make us safe, make us healthy, make us prosperous. I actually just got back from Mexico City. I, I spent the last couple of days in Mexico City where I met with with um, uh, Mexican officials, but I also met with the two leading uh, presidential candidates that will be the next president of Mexico. And that's part of the conversation as well. I mean, we know the yeah. community with Juarez and, and El Paso is really one community, but oftentimes Mexico City forgets about uh, Juarez. And, and just like Washington forgets about El Paso. So I think it's important that we have that tie, trade and commerce, just those kind of discussions. So uh, that's where I was spending the last couple of days. And this year is obviously a big year for both the US and Mexico presidential election years. And it's very important to meet with these officials to help strengthen that relationship with the U.S. and Mexico. Yeah, you know, oftentimes, especially in today's politics, it's all about security. You're talking mm -hmm. about security, and it is very important. Don't get me wrong. The border situation is, you know, I have about 60% of El Paso County. Mm -hmm. We, El Paso is certainly... Have, have, have seen our fair share of the security piece, but there's also this other element to it, the trade and commerce piece to it, and just the interaction, you know, um, uh, COVID was a prime example. You know, El Paso may have gotten some of the access to COVID shots, but if Juarez didn't get anything, what yeah. difference are you making? And, and many people that don't spend time on the frontera don't really understand that, that kind of level of engagement. So it's very important. What I, what I told the Mexican officials is, look, we, were we will always be neighbors but I want us to be partners. You know, it can't just be somebody else's fault. And Congressman, real quick, you know, a big topic we've been talking about with the border is the recent decision from the Supreme Court on the razor wire cutting. Just your thoughts on that. I know the border is something that you really cover. You look to 
border policy, especially with this upcoming election, what are you hoping to see? You know, my district stretches from San Antonio to all the way here in El Paso. I represent two thirds mm -hmm. of the Texas-Mexico border. And what I've seen is this, there is no amount of razor wire that will stop somebody that has traveled 2,000 miles from returning, right? You have to start at the very front of that process. You have to prevent them from even beginning down that track. The facts are nine, nine out of 10 people will not qualify for asylum. So we gotta stop sending them down this dead end. And the other part of it too is we do have to enforce the laws. If somebody comes over and they don't qualify for asylum, we have to deport them and we have to send them back to their country of origin because it's only gonna get worse. And I don't wanna see city resources get, some, get consumed like I've seen in Eagle Pass and Del Rio and other parts of my district where all of a sudden police aren't policing or these high speed chases. The option is either do you let a smuggler get through and it's, it's a wild, wild west, or do you chase a smuggler and all of a sudden you're putting Americans in harm way. It's a lose-lose situation. Part of the deal is how do we get at the forefront of it? How do we prevent, how do we create legal routes where people can come and work? Maybe not citizenship, but they can come and work and do those things. And then also how do you hold, the, hold people accountable that are breaking the law? All right, Congressman, we could spend probably 30 minutes talking about sure. everything across the border in your district, but thank you so much for stopping by and sharing a little bit of your time with thank us. Thank you for having me. All right, Congressman, thank you so much. Take we'll care. be right back after this break.